Hey guys, good evening. It is getting cold in Georgia, so I'm gonna try to do this as fast as possible. I was hoping to do this video, like right after I released the last one, didn't get around to, what was the hair? So we're here and we're gonna, we're gonna do this. So on the screen right now, uh, this is what we created last time, a beautiful page. Um, last time we focused on column stacking, so oh, reverse column stacking more like, where um, we took a column, a row with two columns, sorry, um, and normally one would fall to the bottom um, and you have like an A and B stack, but what we did this time or last time in the video was reverse it so we, the B comes on top and the A comes on the bottom. That little hack is going to give you the opportunity to have a, a stack that's a bit more consistent throughout the page, um, but this time we're gonna be using a similar code that we used in that previous video. The thing we're trying to achieve today is uh, in this section right here, underneath this row, where we have the logo. When I have a page like this with logos lined up, um, what I would want to be able to do is uh, when I when I get into the smaller screen, these logos, zone into that area, I wanted it to stay in line. So as you can see, um, the, the logo itself is actually responsive as well. Um, and they're staying in line with everything. One of the limitations in ClickFunnels Editor is that when you have a row, it always stacks and you can't change how it stacks or if it does not stack, if that makes sense. The problem with that is it looks great on desktop, but when I bring that over to mobile phones on my phone, it would always stack and take up most of the screen space, which is Cool. As always, I'm going to start off with a blank page, um, just giving both of us a good starting point. Uh, I'm going to add myself a section, full width, and um, let's do uh, let's let's start with a, a three column and see where we can get this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a logo, uh, so I can just show you what's going to happen. Um, having some sort of visual here does really help. So I'm going to go into my demo image. Change this image to a logo. I've uploaded some logos already. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into settings and I'm gonna set the image width to be 80%. Um, I'm actually hitting 90. I said 90% because I do like the, the little bit of breathing room that it gives between the logos. Uh, I'm gonna set the first logo and what I can do from there is um, I, can, I can clone it. Uh, and that's normally the best way to do things is set up one thing and then you could just bring it over and bring it over instead of um, putting all the images in and then you have to configure every single one. I uh, will have to change this logo though. Let me change to Google. Cool. Okay, so we're going to get into the coding part. Um, let's go in and find your settings inside of your row. We're going to go into get CSS. I have a mic here and it's blocking the bottom half of my screen. Um, I, I'm going to get the CSS ID selector here, um, command C, control C, to copy that. And then I'm going to go into settings and then hit custom CSS. And inside of here, I'm going to paste the row ID and we're going to open curly brackets and then go into our next line. In our next line, we're going to say display colon, uh, flex and semicolon. And what this is going to do is we're going to define the whole row as a flex, um, a flex box. And if there are any developers watching this, um, I'm, I'm so sorry of how I explain any of this. I'm definitely not a coder. I just like to hack things inside of the editor. So forgive me. So display flex is going to help us control if the row itself is going to be stacking, if it's going to be reversing, flip-flopping, if it's going to stay in the row. Um, so defining the row as flex is going to allow us to do what we're going to do next, which is if I go to the next line, flex, whoa, capital letters, flex, <laughs> sorry about that, flow, column, and then we're going to type in row, no wrap, semicolon. What we're saying is um, we want to row and we don't want it to wrap around. We want it to stay in a single line, single formation. That's what we want. Um, and the last thing we need to add is align items uh, column baseline. And I'm going to explain to you why I need this in a, a little bit. And I'm going to close that off with a, a curly brackets and I'm going to close it off. So now we have um, three of our beautiful logos here. And if I go save, and now if I go shrink this, 
Nice. It stays within its row and it's not going to stack. And you saw the logos kind of like moving up and down because it's also determined by a percentage since we set that at 90%. Uh, these logos are going to be kind of flexible. And I'm going to show you why I put the baseline. I'm going to go back into the settings, into custom CSS, and then take out this align items. Um, and then I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to refresh this page. Um, and when I go ahead and start making this smaller, you see that Amazon here is kind of sticking up at the top. Um, and this is something that I couldn't really figure out um, in the in the easiest way possible to fix this. But what it's doing right now, it's it's applying 20 pixel margin in top of the the not the first column, but every other column that comes afterwards. So if I go deeper in some of these columns, you can kind of see. And if I click on or if I click on Google, here we go. Uh, it's giving a margin top of 20 pixel, and it's overwritten through an important. So what kind of happens with CSS is if there is a, an important code, the only way to beat an important code is to be more specific with what I'm trying to call for. Uh, which means that if you have tens, 20 logos, what you're going to have to do is kind of like specifically go in and try to beat basically this code, um, which is, which is not fun. So the best way to do it is, um, for you to give yourself an align item baseline, which just means to align all the items inside of the row at the bottom of the row itself. Let's see, here we go. Align items here. The other fix for this without using the align items baseline is um, you could just have your your code as this without the align align items. Um, what you could do is just on the first column, you could clone your logo um, and you could hit settings and then hit mobile only um, and then add a 20 pixel margin on top of that. So when it goes back onto desktop, it's going to disappear. Um, but when we say, uh, we need to also define this as desktop only. And if I go save, um, now what's going to happen is on desktop, it's going to have the, uh, the bigger Amazon logo without the 20 pixel margin on top. Um, but when it gets to the smaller screen, it's going to render out. Yep. It has a 20 pixel margin top. And since everything else has a 20 pixel margin top, that should balance out everything um, and keep it in a same line. The last thing I'm going to show you is uh, this can be done with six columns as well. It's the same principle. Um, I'm just going to use Google here and then maybe mix up with some Microsoft. Microsoft. I'm going to give this guy a 120 pixel top margin. Um, and then, of course, the first one, I'm going to give a clone. We hit settings on this guy and then hit it for mobile only. Put 20 pixels on top, go back to desktop and then make this desktop only. Um, and then go in settings, get the CSS code ID selector, go into settings, custom CSS. Um, and inside this code, I can just add a column and add actually paste the ID selector in there. And what that's going to do is um, if you have a lot of things that require the same kind of code, you could just repeatedly um, paste your CSS ID, just div divide it by a little uh, column here. And that's going to apply the same code for that specific, those specific things. I'm going to save that and now I have these logos that are just going to stay in one line. Cool, so that was an easy one. Uh, thanks for watching, I'm sorry that took so long. It always takes a little bit of time to plan these things out. I'm gonna leave all the codes that I used inside down in the description below. Like my videos, subscribe, it does really help me with making these videos for you guys. I know I said I was gonna make this and it took a long time. And I am looking for new things that I could teach you guys. There's a lot of things that, that's in the editor that's really difficult to do, so. Ask me any questions, ask me things that you might need help with. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for the support. Have a good night and good luck.